In this video, I'll be sharing 10 Revit essential tips I wish I had known when I was just starting out. Like many of you, I spent a lot of my time working in Revit, especially early in my career. But whether you're a beginner or a seasoned pro, you'll find something here that will help you work smarter, model better, and take your Revit skill to the next level. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Vlanka. I'm the principal of the design firm Verb Architecture Workshop. And I also teach architecture at the University of Southern California here in Los Angeles. And without further ado, let's dive in. For this first tip, let's start a new project in Revit. I'm using the latest Revit version, which is 2025.4. In the new project dialog box, under starting template, go to browse, and let's start with just the default Imperial template. In the starting view, which is the level one floor plan, go to view tab, and then click visibility graphics. Of course, you can also type VG as a shortcut. Um, after you've done that, let's type S, then scroll down to site. Let's check the internal origin. Now you can see the symbol in our view. The internal origin is one of the coordinate system inside Revit. The other two are the project base point and the survey point. If you want to learn more and understand the Revit coordinate system, I've included the link in the description to an excerpt from one of the video that I explain the difference between each of the coordinate system. But for now, let's focus on the internal origin. The reason to start your project with the internal origin in Revit is that its location is fixed and cannot be adjusted. It is an important coordinate that can be referenced throughout the project. So what I like to do when starting a new project is place the starting grid point at this origin, which is 1 and A. To do that, let's go to the architecture tab and create a grid. You should be able to snap to the internal origin. Also, when creating your own Revit template, it's good to have this already established with the grids. This way, every time you create a new project, you already have the starting point set for your project every time. Another reason to start with the internal origin is if you're importing a massing model into Revit to use as a reference. For example, go to Component, Model in Place, then select Mass. In the Insert tab, you have the option to link CAD. Make sure that when you're importing in the positioning option, you have selected Origin to Internal Origin. Now you can use this massing model as a reference for building your model in Revit. In Revit, there are two options to bring data and 3D model from other CAD programs into your Revit file, import or link. Many beginners tend to import data into Revit. However, these options embed the data into your model, which can be problematic as the Revit files become more complex, potentially slowing down your model. Another issue with importing your model is that you won't be able to update the embedded geometry or the data if you made any kind of changes outside Revit. So for the second tip, I recommend linking instead of importing. For example, you can use a DWG file as a reference for modeling. So let's go to insert tab, link CAD, and then ensure that you select the file type. For us, it will be DWG file. Again, make sure you select the appropriate positioning option. For best practice, I recommend selecting origin to internal origin. 
By default, your CAD file will be pinned when linked. If you need to adjust the location of the link file, make sure that you unpin it. Now, let's move the DWG file to ensure that the corner of the building aligned with the internal origin. If I make any changes to the DWG file outside Revit, for this example, let's say I remove the grids in the Rhino file and then save it. All I need to do is go to Manage Link, select the file I want to update, and then click Reload. This will automatically update the reference DWG file inside Revit. This workflow is the same for other file types in Revit, such as PDF and images. There are multiple ways to prepare a layout in Revit, but for me, what works best is using detail lines as guides. In the Annotate tab, use Detail Lines, which are only visible in a single view in Revit. For the line style, I typically select the Revit default line. You can also create your own line style, but for now, let's just use this line style, which has a line weight of one and a green color and a solid line pattern. For those familiar with AutoCAD, this might feel like a familiar technique. For example, I use detail lines to create the guide layout in a plan view. It's easier to do in the initial draft and then I will use this detail line as guides when I start building the model. Note that in the architecture tab, there is another option called model lines. With model lines, you can also select the line type However, the difference is that when you draw model lines in plan view, they will also appear in 3D view. Model lines are visible in all the appropriate view, while detail lines are only visible in one view. However, if you want to convert detail lines to model lines or vice versa for any reason, all you need to do is select the line and then click convert line. This will change the lines to either detail or model lines depending on your selection. With the detail line we just created, you can now use it to start modeling. For example, go to the architecture tab and select wall. To draw the wall, select pick lines and in the properties panel, for the location line, you can choose how you want to draw the wall based on the reference line. When referencing a detail line, I like to select wall center line so that the grid aligns with the center of the wall. You can also use this technique when referencing a link DWG file. The pick lines tool make it easier to build walls in Revit using reference. The align tool is one of the most important modified tools to use when working in Revit. It can be used to move and rotate elements. For example, let's say we want to align and angle this wall to an angled reference line. So let's go to the Modify tab and select Align Tool or use AL as shortcut. Then select the element you want to align to, in this example, the reference line. Next, click the element you want to align, which in this case is this wall. After you made the alignment, you can lock the element so that every time you move the reference line, the wall will also move with the reference line. One convenient tool that I use all the time when modeling in Revit is create similar tool. For example, I've created a door and I want to create a similar door. Of course, you could go to architectural tab and select door. However, the best way to make your modeling more efficient is to right click the door and then select create similar. You can also select the create similar command while the door is selected or even faster, use the shortcut CS and now you can add as many similar door as you needed for your model. 
There are different wall location lines for walls in Revit. Wall center line, core center line, finished face, both interior and exterior, and then core face, both interior and exterior. This location line are important when modifying walls in Revit. For example, let's say there's been a change in the wall type based on the design feedback. If the location line for the wall is set to wall center line, this will maintain the center line when we change the wall type. For instance, to an 8 inch generic masonry wall. This will keep the wall at the grid location and change, but will alter the building footprint and the interior square footage. However, if we change the wall location line to finish face exterior, when we switch the wall to the 8 inch generic masonry type, it will maintain the location of the exterior finish face of the wall. This will affect the grid line location and the interior area calculation, but will preserve the building footprint. When updating the walls in Revit, make sure to select the appropriate location line to minimize the adjustment elsewhere in the model. When you select any element in Revit, you will automatically see a temporary dimension appear. These are helpful when modeling and drafting in Revit. For example, you can select a dimension and input a new value which will modify the position of the element referenced by the dimension. You can also adjust the witness line of the temporary dimension. These are the blue dots at the end of the dimension. You can drag the blue dots to a different location to redefine the dimension reference. Additionally, you can click the icon below the dimension value to make the temporary dimension permanent. Make sure important elements in your models are pinned. For example, pin the grid lines in your model to avoid accidentally deleting or moving them, as you want to maintain their location. To do this, select a grid, right click, and then choose select all instances in entire project then go to modify tab and then select pin tool or you can also use the shortcut pn to lock the selected element in place you can also toggle the select pin element icon to off to disable the option of selecting pin elements however make sure to not forget this toggle and it's one of the most common troubleshooting solutions I give my student whenever they are unable to select an element in their Revit file. One of the most useful tools in Revit, which I think most beginners don't use, is the selection filter. For example, if I need to select just the doors in the view I'm working on, I can click and drag from left to right to select any elements that are fully within the selection box. Or I can click and drag from the right to left to select elements within the selection box. However, there is a better way to do this, especially in a more complicated model. You can select everything in your view and then use the selection filter. In the filter, you can choose a specific category or multiple category. But for our example, let's just select doors. You can also see how many doors are selected. And now you can just modify all those doors at the same time once they're selected. There are a lot of shortcuts in Revit, but you don't have to memorize all of them. Here are a few that I think are important and that I use all the time. These shortcuts will save you time when working in Revit. For modeling, I use WA for walls, DR for doors, WI for windows. Walls, doors, and windows are the most common modeling elements you will use in Revit. When drafting, I frequently use DL for detail lines, 
di for dimension tx for text and then tg for tags in revit you were constantly modifying your model more than creating it the shortcuts that i frequently use when modifying my models are co for copy mv for move ro for rotate of for offset mm for mirror al for align tr for trim sl for split for views i constantly use wt for multiple views tl for tin lines and the shortcut that i use the most is of course vg which is for visibility graphics i hope you find these 10 tips helpful in improving your revit skills making your workflow more effective and efficient as you tackle your projects let me know in the comments below which tip you found most helpful and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like button and share it your support means a lot to the channel and if there are any specific architectural tutorial or topics you'd like me to cover in the future video feel free to drop your suggestion in the comment below and for more architectural content make sure to subscribe and follow us on all our socials thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video